I recently reviewed BenQ PD3420Q. This is their 34 inch 21 to 9 ultra wide screen. And I think that this saying sums it up best. The whole is greater than the sum of its parts. And that is because BenQ have included so many AccuColor technologies in there that when worked together with the display in general in concert, you have this amazing display that could do so many great things. Particularly the feature that I want to focus on is the color gamut coverage the accuracy, and also the uniformity aspect of it. So let's get into the display. I'm Art and Art is Right. Before we start, subscribe if you're new and hit on the bell icon so you'll be notified every time I upload cool new videos like this. Okay, so we're literally getting into the display. Quite amazing. So what I have done is use X-Rite i1 Profiler along with their colorimeter, the i1 Display Pro Plus, to do a calibration for all these color modes that you see on the display. These are the popular color modes that are being used for photography for any type of creative workflow and they're not so specific like CAD cam or animation or anything like that, which is the reason why I'm doing these and not some of the other color modes I have just mentioned. So we can see there in the very first column, what we want to look at is the Delta E value. One more thing I want to mention is that on the calibration report card for my panel, it was able to achieve a Delta E of 1.02 from the factory. What that means is that it's pretty much imperceptible for the human vision to discern a color variation. Even if you have two swatches side by side, a Delta E of one is really extremely hard to tell them apart. So this means that this panel, it's really great. But when we calibrate this, when we run a custom calibration on our end, the results even better. As you see there, most of them are hovering at 0 0.4, 0 0.5 for the average Delta E for all the patches. The only one that has a higher Delta E value, and that is the MBook mode. And that is because, well, MBook is really designed to match that of an Apple built in display, such as a MacBook, MacBook Pro, iMac, iMac Pro. And it's supposed to designed to match those uncalibrated. What that means is Apple have gone in and tweaked their DCI-P3 differently than the reference DCI-P3 color space. So obviously when the program is trying to do calibration, it's doing to reference, hence why you're having a slightly higher Delta E. You can run the MBook mode and calibrate it or uncalibrate it, it's perfectly fine, but I just want to explain to you why that's happening. You can pause the screen and take a look at the other result too, for the average, for the 90 patches, top 10 and everything, but for the most part, everything is good. If I have to calibrate the display in general, I would use the largest color mode possible, which is display P3, because in our computer operating system for both Mac and PC, there is a program running in the background called CMM, the color management module that's doing the color translation anyway. Exception in this would be if you're using Resolve, the best thing that you can do there is use Rec 709 and use the Gamma 2.4 to run the calibration for this panel. All right, that being said, let's move on to uniformity, which is the big discussion here. Again, feel free to pause any of these screens, but for a quick explanation of this, we have three columns going down there. So these are measuring the different aspect of the display using i1 profiler software. The first column going down or the major column there, we have luminance. This is based on the luminance level. It's pretty much just measuring how bright the display is. And this is not a good metrics to be using to do display uniformity test at all. So for instance, if we look at the luminance on the dark gray, the center is four, the left center is three. That's only one that's different, but that contributes itself to 25% variation. So obviously not a good way to look at this. The Delta E, looks at the color variation for many aspects, but it also takes in the human observer. The best thing that you can use though, is to look at the Delta EAB. And so far for this panel in display P3, the Delta EAB is amazing. Quickly to go over the rows or the major rows on the side, we have tested the white, the gray, and the dark gray areas. But again, in display P3, uniformity is awesome. With the bottom right corner, I would say a little bit higher, it's a four point something, but it's actually not too bad at all. Um, you're going to still get good results out of this. For DCI-P3 color mode, we start to see that the top right and the center is having a little bit higher uniformity again, or a little bit higher Delta E rather, but it's not too bad at all. It's a little bit over five, but it's not six, seven, it's not 10 by any means. So we're still getting a really great Delta E throughout. And as you can see there, luminance is not really a good way to look at it because it's pretty much red almost the entire uh, panel already, but that's just really one nit difference. So these are really great panels. sRGB, amazing uniformity, everything is low. And for Rec 709, uh, very similar to sRGB. However, on the center left, it is a little bit higher. It's 5.33 Delta E, so it's just a touch higher there. 
and we're gonna look at the M book color mode. Amazingly enough, the M book has really amazing uniformity, and for the user mode, it also got really great uniformity as well. So a few things to note about this uniformity calibration from the factory is that there's no generic formula for uniformity. All of these panels have gone through a rigorous calibration process. So for all the color modes, they have to individually be calibrated and the data stored on the display. This is the very same thing with the uniformity that the display gets divided into grids and all of those grids get measured and the data for all those minute adjustment and fine tune are stored on the display and these are very panel specific. So what you're seeing right now is the result based on my sample panel that I have. But so far, the general consistency and uniformity throughout this panel and all of the color modes are really great. This is pretty much the best in all of the PDE displays so far. So this is just really awesome. The panel that you have are going to be slightly different, but quality control is of a paramount essence to BenQ. So you're going to get a really great display as well. If you have any questions about this, leave them in the comment section below. Give this video a like, subscribe if you're new, hit on the bell to be notified every time I upload cool new contents like this. And until next time, artists right.